As you venture deeper into the swamp, the strange blue light you saw from a distance comes into view. Its source, a reptile about the size of a small dog wrapped in blue scales, begins to furtively back away as you approach. From the small lizard, you can hear a faint clicking sound and you can feel electricity begin to dance across your skin. As you take another step forward, dozens of small blue reptilian creatures, just like this one, begin to emerge from underneath every wilted mushroom cap and small burrow. They each start to glow faintly with dim blue electric light. Roll initiative. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where we go through old versions of Dungeons and Dragons and find interesting creatures and convert them to 5th edition for use in your home game. I'm your host Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going to be going back to the 3rd edition Monster Manual. Unlike a lot of the monsters I cover on this show, this isn't from some obscure adventure that came out 20 years ago or from some random edition of Dungeon Magazine that came out in the 80s. This creature is in fact just in the base monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons 3.5. The Shocker Lizard is a very innocuous creature and it's pretty easy to skip over. It just looks like a small lizard that has an electrical attack. Doesn't seem like it's too interesting. But when you actually read up on these little guys and see what they're capable of and how they work together, they're very, very interesting creatures. These little cooperative reptiles pack an incredible punch, and I think they can make a great addition to almost any 5th edition game. And whether you're using them as a lethal combat encounter, companions to some other monsters, or just a bit of fauna to make your world come alive, I'm going to tell you today about what they can do in battle, some changes I've made to the base creature to make them a little bit more interesting, and of course some plot hooks and ways that you can implement them in your world. So, first things first, make sure you've got those rubber boots on, because it is time for... These creatures are small in size and incredibly nimble on the battlefield. They have a climb speed and a 40 foot move speed, so they're pretty quick. They generally want to avoid battle if possible because they are indeed small reptilian creatures, so they don't want to fight something as big as a human or even a group of humans if they can avoid it. Generally the way they do this is by making a clicking sound, which is actually the sound of them generating static electricity that kind of coats their body. They do this through some sort of magical means, as well as using their horns and the tip of their tail plates as a conductor to direct this electrical energy. If their warning is not taken and the creatures continue to approach them even after they've been discharging a small amount of static electricity, they will discharge a stunning shock. This electric shock does a fair amount of lightning damage, but if it drops someone to zero hit points, they're automatically stabilized. This isn't meant to actually kill someone, it's simply meant to knock them unconscious so the lizard can get away. However, if the threat is very serious and the creatures chasing after it don't relent, it can call for help from its friends, and these creatures are extremely dangerous in large groups. And I guess saying that it calls for help is a little disingenuous because these creatures have an ability called electricity sense where they can sense any electric discharge within 100 feet of them. In a natural environment like a swamp or thick jungle where these things tend to live, electrical discharges are very uncommon unless we're talking about thunder or lightning hitting the ground. So since these lizards are really the only thing that's creating electrical discharges, when a lizard detects another electrical discharge, it's most likely one of its friends in trouble. So they will run to that creature's aid and group up. Remember the brood is in trouble so we need to go help them. And what these guys can do in groups is channel their electricity onto one of their friends. So say you have three shocker lizards. Two of them can channel their electric energy as an action onto the third one. And then when it comes time for that third shocker lizard to take its turn, it can use the overload ability, which functions very similarly to its previous shock ability, except this does lethal damage and it does an extra 2d10 for every single lizard that's channeling electrical energy onto it. So each of these lizards can compound its electrical energy onto one of them, and when it comes time for that lizard to take its turn, it can unleash a potentially devastating shockwave that's going to do anywhere from a little bit of damage to a lot depending on how many lizards are focusing on it. Now there is a cap to how much electrical energy can be unleashed at once. It won't be able to do more than 12d10, but if you have six shocker lizards in a group all focusing on one, that 12d10 is going to be absolutely devastating. Granted, it is consuming the actions of many other creatures, but to do that much damage all at once to a potentially mid or even low level party is very dangerous. Now of course these little creatures do have a bite attack as well. They don't use this too often. The only time they're really going to be using their bite is if either they're hunting something 
or if they are attacking a creature that is a threat to them and their electric shocks don't seem to be doing anything. Now I really love these little guys, but there are a few changes that I've made to update them so they're more in line with 5th edition and they also are a little bit more interesting to run in my opinion. So let's take a look at some... The first thing I changed is I gave these guys the nimble property which allows them to disengage as a bonus action. This is the same ability that goblins get in 5th edition. I thought this was pretty in line with what this creature is all about and it makes them a bit harder to pin down which I think is more interesting when it comes to doing battle. Because they're supposed to be these kind of furtive, always alert, watching for danger type creatures in the natural world. So getting the ability to disengage as a bonus action just seems like it makes sense to me. Plus it gives you as a DM a lot of creative freedom when you're designing encounters and the type of environment that they're going to be in. Another thing I changed was about the way these creatures channel their electric power from themselves to another one of their kind. Normally this ability only allows them to channel their electrical energy onto another lizard that's within 20 feet of them. But I changed it so that they can target a creature that's within any distance away as long as there's another lizard within 20 feet of that creature that they can also target. So essentially what this means is that say there's a lizard 40 feet away and another one 20 feet away and there's a lizard that wants to use this channeling ability. It can channel to that lizard that is 40 feet away by channeling to the lizard that's 20 feet away and then passing it on to the one that's 40 feet away. Essentially allowing these creatures to treat themselves as kind of conduits. This seemed a lot more interesting to me and again makes things more dynamic in battle when it comes to positioning which is always fun. I did play around with the idea too of doing a separate stat block for kind of a shocker lizard alpha who might be a little bit bigger and have some extra abilities but ultimately I felt like that wasn't really necessary and kind of detracted from this creature in a general sense. However if you do like that idea and you want to kind of have an alpha shocker lizard as some kind of boss or something like that you can easily do it. You can just up the size category to medium, maybe, and of course give them a slight bump to all their stats and just increase the damage and the save DCs for their shocking abilities. It's nothing too challenging and it's something you'd be able to do with literally any creature, so I didn't feel it was necessary to kind of bog things down with a whole separate stat block. But that's something you could think about doing. So those are the two things I changed and I feel these two minor changes elevate these creatures to somewhere that they'll be a lot more memorable for your party when they encounter them. Now let's talk about some actual potential encounters with a look at some. So my first thought about these critters is that they are at the very baseline an interesting piece of fauna to include in your world. They're one of those creatures I feel fits so well with D&D because they're just kind of like normal animals you'd see but they have this weird electrical ability and I think that makes them really fascinating. So at worst these guys make a cool addition to add to the set piece of a swamp or jungle area or anywhere else in your world that reptiles might be. At best this might lead to some interesting roleplay encounters and kind of make things more memorable and at absolute worst it just makes your world feel a little bit more real by having some fascinating creatures inhabit it that are just there because they live there. If you wanted to expand on this creature a little bit more, you could even make it an option as a familiar for a spellcaster. Maybe you have a sorcerer who has gone down the path of the Stormcaller or whatever the thunderous sorceress origin is, and uh, they have one of these lizards as a companion. Or maybe they're just acting as a familiar for a wizard. It could be a PC or even an NPC, whatever you decide, but they make neat little companion critters to be sure. Now these critters are technically monstrosities because they are basically animals that have some really supernatural traits, but if you wanted to bend the rules a little bit and make them beasts, Maybe you have a druid circle that lives in a swamp and they all disguise themselves as shocker lizards during the day so that they can remain hidden. Now these creatures are already scary enough on their own, but if you have a circle of druids that are all acting as shocker lizards and they're actually being intelligent about their actions, that's potentially very dangerous. And maybe, these, maybe this druid circle simply blends in with a group of normal shocker lizards and they use this kind of shocker lizard den as their home base out in the middle of a swamp or jungle. You could also have these guys just be generic enemies in some kind of dungeon and maybe they start out in smaller numbers so that the players get an understanding for what they do and how they chain lightning off of each other and that kind of thing. Ultimately the numbers that they encounter grow and grow until they get to some kind of, it could be the main boss or just a mini boss in the dungeon which is the Shocker Lizard Alpha and the room has like a dozen of these things in there and that is a very tough encounter. Your players will know that it's tough because they know the more of these things that exist the more powerful their lightning becomes. 
You can also use them as essentially a trap that is to be bypassed. Maybe there is a certain passageway that the players need to get through, either out in nature or within a dungeon, that is just filled with these little guys, and they don't want to get too close or they might aggravate them. So the party needs to think of a way to either appease to the lizards by giving them treats or something like that, or just go completely around it, which might cost them time, but will ultimately be safer. I mean, there's tons of little alternatives you could throw in there, but using them as a hazard is just as valid as anything else, really. Or maybe there's a gang of blue kobolds who make use of these creatures because they can shock their enemies and knock them unconscious, maybe even just bypassing travelers, and then the kobolds go in and steal all their stuff. Maybe the party is entreated by some kind of merchant, or even the merchant's guild if it's a larger city, and they're saying their merchants are found knocked unconscious and they're being electrocuted by something, and all of their valuables have gone missing. So the party goes to investigate, and it leads into kind of a dungeon that is run by kobolds, and they have some shocker lizard companions. And of course, at the end, there's a giant pile of shinies to be looted and maybe returned to the merchants? It depends on how much money they're offering. Ultimately, these guys can be extremely cute and endearing or utterly terrifying, and I think any creature that rides that line, depending on how you DM them, can be something definitely worth taking a second look at. If you've ever had these creatures used on you, or maybe you've got an idea about how to use them in your game, definitely leave a comment below and tell me about it, because as I said, I'm an idea thief and I draw inspiration from you guys all the time. And if you do want to run this creature, in the description below you can find a link to the Google Stat Block which will give you everything you need there for free to run it as you see fit. And of course if you are one of my patrons you can find the Monster Manual style Stat Block on the Patreon page. If you're not already a patron and you want to support the channel, definitely consider doing that. It's three bucks a month, you get several Monster Manual style Stat Blocks and you get to hear whatever other ravings I post on Patreon which is good. But in any case, I do just want to thank you guys all so much for watching, I really do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Until then...